So we're starting from manganese 4 oxide, or manganese dioxide, reacting it with hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid reduces manganese 4 to manganese 2, forming manganese 2 chloride, and oxidizes chloride ions to chlorine. And we're capturing the released chlorine in a sodium hydroxide bath. This is the new temporary lab space. We are in doing renovations, so they moved us over into the former dance studio. That's why there's the mirrors. <laughs> so I'm setting up this reaction here. Uh, so since this reaction generates chlorine gas, I'm doing this in a fume hood. I wouldn't even consider this otherwise. The manganese dioxide going into the round bottom flask where we're going to add the hydrochloric acid into. And the positive pressure generated from the chlorine generation is going to push the chlorine through the apparatus into the sodium hydroxide trap. Here's the hydrochloric acid. As you can see, it's just coming straight from the hardware store. I started adding the hydrochloric acid really slowly, and it turns out that this was, a, you know, unnecessary. But I didn't want to, this was my first time running it, so I didn't really want to generate too much energy of reaction all at once, if that was what was going to happen. At least I got to set up a pretty fun little apparatus to do this in. The reaction didn't actually start going until I heated it. Here it is in a water bath. And you can see the yellow color of chlorine gas in the apparatus. This is actually really cool. This is my first time seeing chlorine in person. And uh, a few other students actually let me know that they thought it was really cool that they got to see chlorine for the first time in their lives as well because of this project. So, what an honor. <laughs> the school was generous enough to allow me to do this project uh, sort of in the background during classes or during lab section. So I thought that while this was happening that this precipitate was some sort of a indicator that the reaction was moving forward, but in fact it uh, turned out after the fact that this precipitate was maybe sand or something like that. It didn't react with any acids or bases and it makes sense that sand would be in there because it is for ceramics. So having some silica isn't really going to mess up making a, a ceramics glaze like it'll sort of somewhat get in the way of a chemical reaction, but not really. So yeah, just filtering it through cotton and then boiling the water off. I suspected that this process would also be releasing some chlorine gas and hydrochloric acid, so did it in the fume hood. I pretty much just cranked up the hot plate as high as it'll go to do this. Once it got down to this low level, the uh, material started splattering around and leaping up out of the surface of the liquid into the surroundings, which was uh, you know fun to clean up later. It looked a little bit more orange yellow than I had anticipated it would look. I read that this is due to the presence of iron. Put the residue back into water solution and then shook the solution with acetone, which selectively extracts iron salts. Uh, evidently, iron is a uh, common contaminant in manganese oxides that you purchase <laughs> for ceramics. <laughs> Uh, this is after evaporating the aqueous layer after all the acetone washes and I was not really satisfied with how it looked. It still was looking very yellow and 
Not like that pink color I was expecting from manganese 2 chloride. But I wasn't quite satisfied with that yet, so I just started washing the dry solids with acetone, which continued turning yellow, adding more, you know, stirring it for a while, and then letting it settle. And the acetone was turning pretty yellow, uh, especially at first. But eventually the acetone stopped turning as yellow, so then the, this yellow color is... Now I never confirmed that it was definitely iron or anything, but the, certainly indicative of the possibility that there are iron ions in the acetone solution, or in the acetone layer here. But you can see the pink color starting to show up more and more as I can repeatedly wash with acetone, which turned out to be pretty handy. Not that I didn't try, but I didn't end up doing a crystallization successfully. And I just kept doing this until it stopped changing color, which took actually a lot of iterations. And eventually this mechanical process turned out to not be all that efficient. You can see I'm just filtering out the acetone. It's still yellow acetone at this point, but the result is looking a lot cleaner. But I pretty much I, I found out about at this time that there was too much iron in the manganese oxide. So yeah, I got this plastic set up and wrapped a very strong iron magnet in plastic as well. Just kind of crunched it along the surface. <laughs> and uh, while the manganese 4 oxide does have pretty strong uh, attraction to this magnet, it's not as much as the iron filings that were in trace amounts, but plenty enough to dirty things up. So I ended up just doing this as many times as it seemed necessary. I don't really remember how much, but uh... I'll do this to try to keep from wasting as much manganese oxide and you can see that there's plenty of this obvious uh, iron <laughs> magnets are fun and here we go again with the cleaned manganese for oxide There were actually uh, several stages along this process where things just went a lot more smoothly, partially because of practice and then partially because I was working with cleaner materials. And eventually this led me to this point where I was grinding the dried salt under acetone, which Ultimately, this produced results that I was happy with. It looks like what it's supposed to look like. This is pink powder. I was still somewhat suspicious of it because when you dissolve this in water, it forms sort of a suspension rather than a complete solution. I read that there could be mixed oxidation state leading to this, but it was, you know, I would say decent enough for my purposes at this point. So what I wound up doing after this, and I didn't film it, was uh, titrating the two different samples of manganese 2 chloride that I came up with after continued rigorous purification. Like, I spent way too many hours just trying to clean this stuff up. With uh, sodium hydroxide, it was like a titra, it was a precipitometric titration. 
by dissolving them in water and titrating with a known concentration of sodium hydroxide and doing math based on the endpoint. And the second material I produced was approximately 99% pure manganese 2 chloride tetrahydrate. And the first sample I produced on the right, after much more purification steps, uh, was about 99% manganese 2 chloride dihydrate.